Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today on the DCC Guy, I want to go back and take another look at the uh, Switch 8 accessory decoder from NCE that I covered in uh, another video back in mid-September of 2019. Now in that video, I showed uh, several different ways that you can uh, operate these and power these. Now, they are designed to be used with DCC. Um, as a result, you can power them just straight off of the DCC power bus. You can run two wires in, feeders in, from the power bus to this device here and set it for DCC operation and you can control it from your throttle. You can control it with uh, push buttons if you have a button board set up like I showed in that video. Um, optionally, they also provided a uh, DC input. These can be operated with DC power from 9 to 15 volts DC and uh, you set it for DC on here on this mode switch and it still receives commands through the DCC uh, power bus, but the DC power acts as supplementary power. So it's not drawing uh, significant amounts of power from your DCC power bus. So that's what that is for. Now also in that video, I showed that you can actually attach a DC power source to this barrel plug here, set it for DC mode, and I've been able to get it to operate using the push buttons and the button board without any problems at all. Unfortunately, after that video, uh, I ordered some more of these. And the ones that came in do not reliably work with DC power alone. They have to have the DCC power bus attached. That said, the guys at uh, North Coast Engineering, NCE, uh, want to point out and it is their official company line, that these are made to operate with DCC power, with DCC track power, or with DC supplementary power. And, you know, both together, but not on DC power alone, okay? They do not, therefore, advertise this capability, and um, they do not support it that way. So, if you've been having problems trying to get one of these to work with DC power alone using the button board and the um, uh, push buttons like I showed in the video, you may have not have been successful. And the guys at NCE have been getting a number of complaints from people who say they you know, saw my video and they can't get theirs to work the same way I was. So what I want to do today is zoom in down here on the workbench and show you again exactly how I do it and, you know, the problem with this is um, the original uh, Switch 8s that I have on my layout work fine. I have them attached to a 12-volt DC power bus that runs underneath my layout. It powers a number of these um, uh, uh, Switch 8s with push-button controls, and I have never had a single problem with them uh, working. And they are not attached to the uh, track uh, power bus. However, the ones that I purchased uh, last fall, uh, after I did that video, some of them, you know, exhibited the problem. And, you know, the guys at NCE have told me that there's nothing changed about the design of these boards. There's nothing that's been changed about the, the programming, the software involved. I, I have no idea at all. But let me show you uh, uh, right here on my workbench how I do it and how I get around the problems that you might be seeing. So I'm going to uh, reset the camera and we'll get started with that. Okay, I've got the uh, Switch 8 accessory decoder set up just like I did back in September of 2019 with the button board here with a uh, simple momentary contact push button switch and the tortoise attached. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, power this up. I'm using a uh, 15 uh, volt, 10 amp power supply. I've reset it, uh, the voltage in it, so it's only putting out about 13 volts. So it's running a little bit slower, and I, I prefer to underpower things. These will operate with nine, anywhere between nine and 15 volts DC. So I like a nice 
a slower throw rate, it's not as noisy that way, and it doesn't overstress the components uh, by running at 15 volts and taking the chance of over overpowering it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and power this up and show you what it does. Okay, so I'm going to turn the power on, and you can see it's going to go through this setup here, initialization. And then finally I get three horizontal bars appearing here on this display. That means that it's powered up and it is not receiving DCC commands. And as you can see here, I do not have a DCC feed going into the device. Plus I have it set for DC power. So theoretically, according to NCE, what I'm going to show you now will not work. I push the momentary contact button, the tortoise throws. I push it again, the tortoise throws. Let me show you something else. If I turn it off, turn it on, and hit that momentary contact button before it gets to full initialization, and before these three bars appear, I can push this until I'm blue in the face and that will not trigger. Okay? If I then turn this back off and back on, allow it sufficient time to initialize, it works. Now this is one of the switch aids that I purchased in the fall. I purchased three of those in the fall of 2019. And all three behave the same way. Uh, if you don't allow, allow these time to set up, if you, if anything happens in the uh, initialization mode, they will not function. However, if you go ahead and power cycle them like that, on and off, they work fine. So, like I said, I have no idea why people are having problems with this working. NCE has no idea what's going on. They officially say, you know, the company line is, they produce these for use on DCC layouts, not DC layouts, not with DC power alone. So, they have not made any changes in the design of the board, in the components on the board, and in the programming and software on the board. So as far as they're concerned, these boards work perfectly as designed to do. They did not design them for DC operation alone, and therefore they do not support that, and they can't tell you or me why it works one way or not. Um, however, as I have shown time and again, it works. As long as you do not interrupt the power up an initialization stage. This one, I, I interrupted it. If I turn it off, power it up, let it sit. Okay, it's ready. It works fine. So I have several of these that operate fine on the layout, have been operating for years, several years now. And, you know, I have one that I installed in the fall that it goes through, you know, this reset period. And that's why I ended up using an on-off switch on the negative lead to the uh, power input on the board. Uh, and if, you know, it comes up and the push buttons don't work, I can simply flip it off, back on again, give it time to finish initializing, and then hit the button. And all of these now work like this. Um, it was confusing at first because, you know, I couldn't figure out what was going on and I kept, you know, I kept unplugging the power supply. But that doesn't work because the power supply, even if it's turned off, it has enough stored capacity in it to keep this board alive for a few seconds. So even though you might turn off the, the um, uh, transformer or power supply that you're using to feed DC power to the Switch 8, it may not allow this to go down long enough to clear its memory or whatever in order to power up properly. Um, however, by simply, what I found though was that if I took the barrel plug out, 
That interrupted power without any problem. I could plug it back in and allow it to initialize and it would work fine. So for a more permanent solution, I just put in this standard single pole, single throw, on off switch on the negative lead to the uh, DC power input and that works fine. It interrupts power long enough and you know to uh, allow this board to completely reset and it seems to work fine after that. And I have tested this with you know several different boards that I got in the fall and they all work fine like this. It being the limitation that if you run into a problem do a power cycle, count to three and it'll work. So I hope that helps clear up uh, the questions concerning using these with DC power alone. Um, you know, I'm using them. I'm not going to stop using them. I've got a half a dozen of these on the Piedmont Southern that I use for controlling my turnouts. And I'll probably be buying more in the future. And what I plan to do is just install one of these on-off switches in the main power bus for all of these guys and that way when I turn them on uh, if they come up and need to be reset I can just throw the switch and back on again and allow them to power up properly and they should work. Um, it's worked so far with the one I already have installed on the layout and it's obviously working with this one here that I've set up for the demonstration. Uh, so that's that's about it. I, I think that pretty well lays out uh, one solution that I have found. I can't guarantee, of course, that this will work with the ones that you have because, I mean, we don't know what the, what the difference is. And, um, but it, it, this does seem to work. So give it a try, and if you're still having issues, let me know because I do want to make sure that people uh, are aware that this is one, you know, it's not a problem. It's just one issue that you might run into with trying to get these to work on DC power alone. So that's the solution that I have found for using these boards with DC power alone. It works for me with the ones that I have as I've just shown you. And hopefully give it a try if you've been trying to get yours to work with DC power and have not been successful. Um, obviously I can show you that it will work with the ones that I have given the setup that I've got here and it should be something you can duplicate as well. So let me know in the comments you know, how it works out for you and whether you've run into any problems like this. Um, but I do want to warn you, you know, given the circumstances and the, and, and the uh, comments that I've heard so far uh, from uh, NCE, um, I cannot recommend that you purchase these for use on a DC layout, okay? Like they say, NCE makes these for use on DCC layouts, not DC layouts. They do not advertise them as, uh, as dual mode, and they do not support them for that purpose. So, for that reason, I recommend these for use with DCC power or DCC with DC as supplementary power. But, you know, given the circumstances, I can't recommend these for use with DC power only. So next week, I'm going to launch another series uh, of videos on turnouts. So we'll go ahead and start uh, Monday, I think, with a video, a bonus video on the anatomy of a turnout. You know, we'll describe all the different parts of the turnout so we can, you know, talk and understand what I'm saying when I talk about these different types of turnouts. So we'll go over that. I'll also talk about DCC friendly turnouts versus non-friendly ones and all live uh, versus dead frog turnouts. So we'll go over those and, and I'll cover a few tips on uh, how to use each one. And then in the video next Friday uh, after that, I'll go ahead and show you a collection of different types of turnouts and I'll go over, you know, how each one works as far as in a DCC environment and whether they're DCC friendly or not and how to power them, all those kind of issues that deal with different types of turnouts. And yes, I will have Pico, Insel Frogs, and Electro Frogs. So make sure you come back for that discussion. Have a good weekend and we'll see you next week. Bye now.